Training is one of the most important part of project management. It helps you ensure that your team members are ready to do the job that they are supposed to do. It is also one of the most important preventive action in ensuring that people related problems do not happen in your project. Hello, I am Amit Chandan, PMP Trainer at Adjust Education Services and today I am going to talk about 5 questions from the task number 1.5 which is to ensure adequate training for team members and stakeholders. While going through these questions, we will discuss the mindset required to solve questions that will be framed on this task. Whenever we see some concepts that are important to understand, I would highlight those concepts so that you build the knowledge also that is required to clear the PMP exam. Let's dive right into the question. So question number one, a project manager that is working on a software development project hired a team member for database administration work. The sponsor in the project informed the project manager that this new team member appears inexperienced in the work assigned. Okay, so while you are reading this question, you should note that it is a complaint from the sponsor okay or it is an information from the sponsor that the person appears inexperienced okay these are the words which are very important to spot whenever you are writing the exam okay these words would help you understand whether there is a problem or is it just a concern has the problem been established verified or is it just a concern or a complaint from somebody because your action as a project manager would be different if you know that the problem has got established, which means the problem has occurred or is, there is a definitely a problem compared to a problem which is just a concern in somebody's mind. If it is only a concern in somebody's mind, you would need to verify that concern. If the problem is established, then you may be looking for solution. Okay. So while reading the question itself, develop a habit of understanding whether the problem has got established or is it still a concern? For now, it looks like that it is still a concern because the sponsor is informing that the member does not have the experience. Okay, it appears. Another information, currently there are no other staff members available who are qualified to complete the work. Okay, so this is just an additional information that okay, sponsor is complaining that the team member doesn't appear to be experienced. Second information is there's nobody to replace the work person. Okay. Now, in this scenario, what should the project manager do? Let us have a look at the options. Option A, ask the project sponsor to increase the budget to hire a skilled person in the team. Okay. While reading the question itself, we identified that it is still a concern. It's an information, it's a concern in the team. Now, based on the concern, you would not immediately take a, take a solution. Okay. And that too, let us, for example, assume that if this problem was verified, even if the problem was established, verified that yes, this definitely is a problem. The person is definitely inexperienced. Still, you will not jump to a conclusion saying that I would need extra money. First, you will try to find out what are the potential solutions. Collectively, whatever the team decides, that would be the solution. This may or may not help you even if the problem was verified. Okay, so A on multiple levels is wrong. Then we go to B. Determine an incentive for the team members to improve their performance. Okay, although these two options look very different, but are essentially same. These essentially are the action points without deciding what the root cause it, without deciding what could help in the solution and jumping to conclusion. Okay, as it is, the problem still is not verified yet. How can we jump to conclusion? Right? So B is also wrong because we don't know whether the incentive for the team member would work or not. Right? Is it the lack of in incentive that is resulting in somebody's poor experience? We don't know. There's hardly any relevance to that. Right? And as it is, we don't know whether the inexperience is there or not. Right? So option B is again eliminated. Then we go to C. Reassign the team member to tasks on the non-critical path in the scheduled network diagram. Okay? This is again a solution that you are presenting. Right? And if you are presenting a solution, then you should know that it will work. How do we know that this person, if you assign the person on the non-critical path, it will make the sponsor realize that this person is experienced. 
Okay, there, there's no absolute no relation to what is being discussed and what are the solution that we are providing. If you have spotted what the main point is, the main point is the sponsor has a concern. Sponsor has informed that this person does not appear to be experienced. Right? And for that, we will not look for solution. All the options A, B and C are solutions for the problem which is probably not even there. Okay, so let us have a look at option D. Assess the team members' skill sets and arrange required training for the member. Okay, now look at the difference between option A, B, C and the option D. Option A suggested a solution that increased the budget. Option B suggested a solution, provide incentive. Option C suggested a solution, let us reassign the team member. Option D is saying let us first verify the skill sets. Let us first verify the sponsor's information that we have received about appearing inexperienced. And arrange required training for the team members. Now if it comes as a result of our analysis that this person is actually inexperienced or actually does not have the skill sets or the training, then we will provide the training and provide the required training. Okay, So B is a correct choice or B is the best choice among the three. It was a very easy question if you had identified that the problem is still not verified. Okay, so reading the information in the question is one of the most important thing that you can do with solving questions in PMP. Okay, we all know it is very uh, oftenly said that a well understood problem is half solved. We apply that in project management and we should apply that in PMP exam as well. But understand the problem well. Then read what the question is asking you to do. Then compare the options. Eliminate whatever you think is not correct, compare the option and see which one is better. Okay, That's the approach you can apply to all 180 questions and you will learn a lot in the process, which is the ultimate aim of taking PMP exam. Let's move to question number two. Before that, what is the enabler that we are talking about here? So task number five, ensuring team members are adequately trained and in this question, tested our understanding of first enabler which are nothing but examples of these tasks determine required competencies and elements of training let's move to the next one so now question number two one of the team members on a project to build a hospital management system has recently completed certification for a latest collaboration software tool to be used in the project so the information is that one person has got certified in a particular tool that will be used in the project. The team member is using the system effectively, but the project manager noticed that other team members are not as qualified to work on the new software and its usage. So one person is certified and they are using it properly, others are not as qualified. That's the information. Okay, That's the main summary, that's the situation that is presented to us. One person is using the software, they are certified, other team members are not qualified and not certified. So how should the project manager ensure effective utilization of the software tool? Okay, that's the question. It is very important to understand what the question is because ultimately when you choose the options, it should answer the question. Okay, so spend one or two seconds extra in ensuring that you have understood the question well. So the question is, how will you ensure effective utilization of software? So the option that you will select should help you in improving the effective utilization. Let's have a look at the options. Announce an incentive for a team member who uses the software the most. Okay, At this point of time, as a project manager, as a person who receives so much information from so many different backgrounds, you should be able to differentiate between the words that mean different. Okay, One option, the question is saying, how would you ensure effective utilization? The option is saying that we will provide incentive to that person who uses the software the most. If somebody uses the software the most, they come at 9 o'clock in the office, till 5 o'clock they are using that software. Is that the most effective utilization of the software? We don't know that. Right? So there is a doubt. It may be, it may not be. 
Okay, so as such, when you look at this option and you have spotted that difference, that the question is asking for effective utilization, option is talking about somebody who will use the software the most, might not be a good choice. Okay, if you have not spotted it in the rush of the question, you may feel that okay, yeah, we should provide the incentive to that person. So when we incentivize, people will motiv be motivated, and if they are motivated, they will use the software. Okay, but how do we know that they will use it effectively? Okay, and second thing, how do we know that somebody who uses it the most is also the most effective utilization of it? Right. So. Not a very good choice, but we may not also be able to eliminate because incentivizing someone and uh, that people are using software would in a way, although a very far-fetched thing, although a very indirect thing, but it might help. So as such, we are not very confidently able to eliminate the option A. We'll look at option B, C and D and then we will decide. Okay. So let's go to B. Appreciate the certified team member in front of everyone and reward the member to motivate others. Okay. Almost the same thing. That in one case, we are incentivizing that member who will use the software the most. And we are saying that when once we incentivize somebody, we will be able to motivate our entire team. Option B also saying the same thing, that the person who is certified, provide some award to them. Okay, give, give them some reward so that others get motivated. Okay, It might help in motivating the team members to use the software. But if they are not qualified to use the software, it might not help. Just the motivation might not help. So option A and B both are indirectly helping. We are not able to eliminate it directly. But now while reading option B, we have realized that, okay, I mean, it is motivating the team to use the software, but how will they use it effectively? We have no idea. Right? Let's look at option C. We don't have to immediately eliminate everything. Even if you are not able to eliminate, don't feel uh, uh, bad in, in your project. Okay, I'm not able to solve this problem. Okay. Read the options, all the options, you will get your idea. Okay, So let's have a look at option C. Work with the team to plan training options for other team members. Will it help? Probably. Right. So we are looking at some training options which would help the team members get trained in the software and it will help them become qualified. It may help us in effective utilization. So now we have found a solution. Or now we have found an option that is very close to answering the question. Right? By reading option C, now we are very sure that C is much better than A and B. Eliminate A and B. Earlier you were confused. A could be answered, the B could be answered. What should, what should be done? This is a very difficult question. The moment you read C, now you realize that C is much better than A and B. This is all we have to do in PMP exam. We have to find out which option is better than the others. Okay, so now we go to D. Promote this team member to the team lead position with accountability of ensuring software utilization. That is the person who has got certified, promote them, make them a team lead and make them responsible, make them accountable to ensure that everybody is using the software. Is that the right way to ensure effective utilization? Probably not. Okay, team members collectively should be willing to utilize the software and they should also be qualified. Just providing an accountability to a one person does not improve the qualification of other team members to effectively utilize the software. Okay, so in the first reading, if I have not understood the situation well, if I have not focused on the words like team members are not qualified to work, words like effective utilization of software tool, it will become difficult and we will be confused between option A, B and D. But if we have spotted what the question is asking, what the main idea, what the main problem is in the problem, it will be easy to eliminate. Okay, so A, B and D can be eliminated. C is the best choice. Okay, now, you know that we are talking about the task of ensuring training team to the team members. Okay, and if that is the reason why you selected C, okay, then you are a smart person, no doubt, but in the exam, it might not help. Okay, but in the exam, we would not know that okay, we are talking about this task of ensuring training team members. Okay, so the episodes that we are doing, the series that we are doing task by task, okay, might result in you choosing the that option which is related to that particular task. Okay, and hence the score that you get while you are solving these questions is not as important as the lessons that you learn from these questions. 
Okay, I was discussing with uh, with one person who said that uh, I do YouTube questions and I was uh, I was getting eighty uh, percent, uh, sometimes hundred percent, all correct. Okay, but still my exam was not that good. Okay, this could be the reason. This could be the bias. Okay, that you already know what the topic is, and if you already know the topic, then probably you are choosing the right kind of options there. But while you are solving the exam, you will not know which topic they are talking about. Okay, then it will be a little bit more difficult to solve the question. So my suggestion would be use these episodes as learning something. Note down the lessons that we are discussing. Okay, and apply that in whatever mock exams that you are doing. If you don't have a mock exam, of course, I mean you also have a, have a mock exam. You can attempt that, but apply these lessons in your mock exams. And the score that you get in those mock exams, that is what you should look at, not the questions. How many questions you solve during YouTube? Because me and I think many other trainers also would be using these uh, questions to provide you lessons, provide you ways to answer the questions. Okay, so they might be making it easy, they might be making it medium, they might be making it very difficult, which might not be related to exact question that you are going to see. Okay, so base your preparation or base your confidence of preparation on the mock exam that you take and not on the question that you take. use this to learn the lessons these are very good uh, videos i have seen a lot of videos as well those are also very good videos to help you learn on how to solve these questions okay but don't base your performance on that base your performance on the mock exam that you will take from your trainer or anywhere else or from exist okay let's move to question number three so which one the enabler that we just completed the enabler was determining training options based on training needs, determining the training options for the team members. Let's go to question number three. A learning management system project has been completed and the handover to the operations team is about to commence, which means we are at the closer of the project. So while, while you read this sentence, this is also an important understanding to have. I know I'm, I'm talking about a lot of, lot of things to understand when while reading the question and it's very difficult to do it in 70, 75 seconds. But when you do it in practice, it becomes a habit and you can do it faster. Okay, So it is just very quickly you have to notice that okay, we are talking about closing of the project. One of the key stakeholders, however, complained that neither projects nor operations team can properly operate on the LMS. Okay, The person, the people who are building the software, the people who are going to maintain the software, they don't know how to run the software. Okay, And that is a complaint from a stakeholder. You should notice that. Okay, is it a verified complaint? Is it a problem that is established or is it just a complaint? Okay, so you have to understand that while you are reading the question. In addition, the project manager noticed that there is a an increased risk of project getting delayed because of this problem. Okay, so although the word that is used in the question is the stakeholder has complained, but the last sentence of the information kind of verifies the problem. That in addition, the project manager noticed that there is an increased risk of project getting delayed because of this problem, which means it kind of verifies the problem. Now let's go to the question that, that is being asked. How can the project manager avoid this problem in future? Now for 100% sure that this is a problem. So there is no doubt about the problem now. Because the question is asking how will you avoid this problem? So all you have to do is look at the problem, identify the problem and avoid it. You don't have to be concerned about whether this problem exists or not because the question is not asking that. The question is asking how will you avoid this problem. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Allocating time for team members, training the team members on systems being developed. What is the problem? The problem is the project and operations team do not know how to work on the LMS. What is the solution we are suggesting? That okay, we will train the team members on that system. Okay, looks like a very good choice. Will this help us avoid the problem in the future? Yes. Training is a very, very uh, good preventive action for people related risks. Okay, so A looks like a very good choice. Then we go to B. Okay, even if you are 100% sure that this is the this is the good solution, this is the right kind of solution, still read the options B, C, and D because PMP questions do not ask you to choose the right solution. They ask you to choose the best solution. Okay, there can be three, four right solutions, which means there could be three, four solutions that, that, that could work in the project. Which one is the best considering all the six constraints of cost, schedule, risk, resources and everything. Okay, This is the mindset with which you should solve all the PMP questions. That you are looking for best solution out of the given four option, not the universally correct solution. Okay, We go to B. Facilitating a meeting between both the teams 
to resolve the issue. Okay, there are many uh, PMP exam takers who look at word like facilitating, collaborating, and they put a tick and they move ahead. It's not a good choice. PMP exam is not about tips and tricks and magical tricks that you can apply, the formula that you can apply. It is about situation and the situation, based on the situation, there will be a question asked. Ultimately, you have to answer that question based on that situation. So all the answers would be situation specific. Formulas don't work in PMP exam. Okay, How does it not work? Let's see. Why is B a bad choice? Facilitating a meeting between both the teams to resolve the issue. How will this avoid the problem? Okay, this will solve the problem. This is the best way to solve the problem. So when you face the problem, this is how you will solve it. So if the question was, how will you solve this problem in the future, future projects, then this is how you will solve it. How will you solve it now? This is how you will solve it. Bring the people together, discuss with them, ensure that they have understood the problem and whatever they need to know, we will provide them training and we will figure out the solution. Okay, so this is a good way to solve the problem, but it is not a good way to prevent the problem in future. Okay, so B is not a good choice, A is a good choice. That is what we have understood till now. Then we go to C. Ensuring a more user friendly system that is suitable for the teams. This solution is assuming that user friendly system was a problem, where that is not discussed in this question. Okay, hence it might not work. Okay, the question is saying that team members do not know how to work or operate the LMS. Okay, it is not that the user friendly system is a problem or the system itself is a problem. Okay, the problem is with the people. Okay, they cannot properly operate the LMS. So, C is not a good choice. It is very important to understand what the problem is. Right? The question is not that the LMS is difficult and that is why the team members are not able to operate. It is very clear that it, neither the project or the operation team can properly operate the LMS. So we have to help them properly operate the LMS. Okay, so A is closer to what the problem is being discussed rather than improving the system itself, which is not verified. Okay, then we go to D. Assigning the responsibilities of handover to a dedicated group of people in the team. So we are saying that okay, let's have the handover done by somebody else let 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 there be a dedicated group of people who can do the handover how does that solve the problem what is the problem the problem is the team members cannot operate the lms the project team and operations team cannot operate the lms and we are saying we will have one team who will take care of the handover handover is not a problem the problem is team members cannot operate so we have to work on that solution so d is not a good choice a is the best choice of all Okay, very, very close options. Only when you look at those options independently and compare the options later, will you be able to identify which one is the best choice. Okay, so build this habit. Initially, it will take a lot of time. Okay, I know it will take three minutes, four minutes also. But when you build that habit of looking at it, you will definitely be able to solve it in one minute as well. Okay, let's move to the next question task. Before that, we are talking about enabler number three. Allocate the resources for training. Okay, so figure out the time for training is what was the solution. So we talked about the third enabler of the task number five. Question number four. A project manager notices that one of the team members' performance has not increased despite the training provided earlier. While discussing with the member, the project manager realized the training was scheduled during an important product release and the member could not dedicate the effort required during the training. Okay, so what is the situation here? There is a team member's performance which has not increased despite the training. That is the problem. Then the question also gives us the root cause of the problem or the cause of the problem. Why the problem happened? Why did it happen? Because the training schedule was wrong. It was scheduled during the release where there is a lot of pressure to release the product. Hence the team member although attended the training but could not dedicate the effort required to understand and take benefit of that training. Okay, So in this question, they have given you a problem and they have also given you a cause, why the problem has happened. So now the question is, what should the project manager do next? So once you know the problem, once you know the cause, what should you do? 
figure out the solution. Okay. Let's see. Reprimand the team for neglecting the importance of training. Okay. Did they neglect the importance of training? Or were they in a fix to attend the training and deliver the material on time as well? Deliver the project on time as well? Right. So it's not that they neglected it. And anyways, reprimand is not a good word to use for handling our team. Reprimanding means shouting at our team members. Right? We don't do that. It doesn't help. Ask the team member to stop the work and get trained first. Is it that important that we have to stop the work and then get the training? Can we not do it in parallel? Can we not rearrange the task here and there and do it in parallel? Okay. So stopping the work and getting the training as such is never a good solution. Okay, so even if we are not able to eliminate, let's say for example, if we think that okay, it could be good, we can stop the work and get the training and then we can ensure that the team members know, it's not a very good choice, we go to see. Discuss a more suitable way of providing adequate training. Right? Why not? Rather than saying that we will stop the work, let's try to figure out what is the better way of providing training. Okay, maybe they will work for six hours and two hours daily they will get the training, they will learn on the job, whatever it could be. Okay, let's discuss and figure out what is the best, better way. Okay, so B is saying that we will stop the work and get the train, like taking a decision immediately. C is saying, okay, we will discuss what is the better way of solution. Okay, so C is like figuring out potential solutions, while B is like deciding a solution. Okay, which may or may not work, we don't know. So B can be eliminated. We'll keep C, then we'll go to D. Assign the team member a responsibility that doesn't require training. Okay, I wish that was possible, but it is not. Okay, how would you find the responsibility? And by the way, when you know that the root cause is that they could not attend the training properly, why would you reassign it? When the cause is that the training schedule was wrong, make the training schedule better. Okay, don't change the reassign the task. When you know that the cause of the problem is that the task was wrongly assigned to that person, then you reassign the task. Okay, but here the cause is training schedule was wrong, change the training schedule and in option C, you are discussing a better way of providing the schedule. Okay, hence D can be eliminated, C is better. Okay, what is the enabler that we are talking about? The fourth one which is to measure the training outcomes. It is very important that once you have provided the team members the training, you should check whether it was effective or not. Because if it's not effective, then you have realized what has happened. Right? The performance has gone down. Okay. Now, although we are talking about training the team members, but you would have noticed that we have discussed a lot of problems as well. And that is what would happen in your exam as well. That whichever task they are talking about, it is ultimately a problem that is faced by the team member, by the customer, by the stakeholder, by the project manager. And as a project manager, you have to get involved in solving that problem. So if you know the strategy of solving a problem, you will be able to solve at least 30, 40 questions easily. And in the next slide, we will learn that strategy of problem solving, which will help you as I discussed around 30 to 40 questions easily. If you are able to apply whatever we are going to see in this slide in your questions, 30 to 40 questions easily. Let's have a look at what, what I'm talking about. Okay, so in the PMP question, they would give you a situation, they give you a scenario which is a problem. Okay, first you have to understand the problem. What the problem is? Is it a problem or not? We discussed it, right? So, is the problem verified? Is the problem established? Or is it just a concern in my stakeholder, sponsor, team member's mind? Okay, that is the first thing to do. So, whenever you see a problem, see whether the problem is confirmed or the problem is still a doubt. Because based on that, your options would change. That is the first thing to do. Okay, understand the problem. As we discussed, a well understood problem is half solved. Right, so understand the problem, first step. Then second step is to identify the root cause. Okay, so if you know that the problem is established, right? First type of question, where the problem is not established versus problem established. If it is not established, then the next choice would be meet with the person who has to get the concern and verify the problem, right? So good choice would be to verify the problem. Now, if the problem is verified, then what will be your next step? Identify the root cause. 
Okay, so if in your question information they are talking about a problem which is not verified, your next step is to verify that problem by discussing, by identifying the root, uh, not uh, the root cause, by discussing with the team members, by discussing with the person who has complained, you try to understand the problem without to verify the problem. If it is verified, however, the next step is to identify the cause, identify the reason, identify the root cause of why that problem has happened. So if your problem is verified, if you know that the problem is definitely true, it is established, the next step is to find why the problem happened, find the root cause. So that option which will talk about why you are trying to find out why the problem happened is a good choice. What is the next step to that? Sit with your team and brainstorm the potential solution. Options like facilitate a meeting, bring the people together, collaborate with people. Okay, these are the good choices of brainstorming the potential solution. Okay, so you have verified the problem, you have identified why problem happened, now you are looking for solution. Okay, and there could be n number of solutions in the project management. Okay, give me a problem and I will give you 5-10 solutions. Not me, anybody can do that. Okay, but what I am trying to say here is that sit with your team and they will come up with 75 solutions. But which one is the best solution given your situation, given your project, given your progress in the project? Do you have money? Do you have time? Can you work with quality? Do you have a lot of risk? Do you take risk? Do you not take risk? Right? Your project is specific. So the solution will also be specific to your project, your situation, your solution. So what will you do? Sit with your team, brainstorm the potential solutions. Once you have listed down on shortlisted the best possible solutions, then plan the corrective action to resolve the problem. Depending on whatever your team thinks is the best solution, decide an action plan. That these are the things that we are going to do at this point of time to resolve this problem. So once you have planned it, of course the next step is to implement it. Right? So implement that plan. Implement that corrective action as per your plan. Right? And if you have planned something, you have implemented something, what is the next step? We discuss it throughout our training programs. You must have also heard about from your trainers. If you have planned something, then you implement it. And the next step is to check your plan. And it is applicable for everything that you do in project management. Plan, execute and check. Plan, execute, monitor and control. Plan, implement and check. Plan, implement and review. That's what we do. We plan for something, we implement it and then we check whether we were successful or not. So now we will review the effectiveness of the solution that we have implemented. Very, very important. See, when the problem was established, you identified the root cause. And you and your team thought that this could be the solution. There is no guarantee right? that whatever solution that you are implementing will 100% be successful. It is just your belief that this solution would work. Right? So after you have implemented the solution, you need to verify your belief, right? whether you were right or not. So review the effectiveness of the solution implemented. What after that? Inform the relevant stakeholders the problem has been solved properly and then update the lessons learned document. So while solving the problem, whatever the lesson that you have learned, add into your lessons learned document. If you understand this flow well, if you are able to apply this flow while you are solving the PMP questions, as, we, as I discussed, it will be 30 to 40 questions that you can solve easily and 20, 30 more with a little bit of effort. Okay. Of course, you need to know the concepts, you need to know the topics that are there, to be able to apply all these things. But this is what we apply whenever we are solving problems. This is applicable in BMP, this is applicable in projects, this is applicable in your life. Whenever you are solving the problem, that's how we solve. That is, these are the best practices to solve the problem. There's one question left, by the way. Let's go to the question number five, which is uh, based on a random enablers, okay? Based on the task, but not assigned to a particular enabler because we have already seen all the four enablers and four questions based on that those enablers. Let's look at this question. A startup in the field of artificial intelligence plans to launch a new product in the market that will suggest personality improvement plans based on customers' daily habits. Okay, so great startup coming up based on the habit, it will tell the personality improvement plans. While you are reading this, if the privacy thing got into your mind, then you are in the right approach. Okay, but how can somebody notice my daily habits using a software application or anything? and then help me improve my personality plans, there is something related to privacy. Okay? 
Uh, I mean, it could be applicable, it could not be, but that is something that came into mind while we were reading it. Okay. The application required to go through a lot of regulatory checks and changes before they could launch in the pro product in the market. Of course, right? no government would directly allow anybody to track customers' daily habit. It will be an invasion of privacy. Right. So, somebody is coming up with an artificial intelligence uh, product and there is a lot of regulatory checks is what the main information in the question. In regard of anything else, that somebody is launching a product, there is a lot of regulatory requirement and the change in the product, that is what the information is. The next part of information is as a result, the product launch was delayed by more than 6 months. Okay. What has happened in this question? They have given you a situation that talks about some situational requirement and it also talks about an impact of that situation. That the delay was more than 6 months. That is the information that there was a launch to be done, there were a lot of regulatory requirements, lot of changes because of which the launch was delayed by 6 months. Now let us come to the question. What should the project manager do in the future to avoid the situation? Right. So, the question is not asking you what will you do now. It is saying that now that the delay has already happened, the launch has already delayed by 6 months, how would you ensure that it does not happen next time when you launch a product? Okay, so they are asking us to find out how to avoid the situation. Let us see. Provide training to the team members on how to negotiate with the regulatory authority. Okay, although we are talking about the task training, but have a look at it on what we are training them on. Okay, so we are training them on how to negotiate with the regulatory authority. Is that the reason? Does the question talk about the cause? That the team could not negotiate well with the regulatory authority and that's why it was resulted in six months? No. Right? So if that's not the cause, then this could not be the solution as well. So we don't know whether this will help training the team members on how to negotiate with regulatory authority. Because we don't know whether the negotiation was wrong or the authority itself, I mean regulation itself meant a lot of changes and because of which the word got delayed. We have no idea. Right? So this could not be the solution. We can either eliminate it or if you want to keep it and compare and see, we can do that. Let us go to B. Use Kanban boards and cumulative flow diagram to ensure a clear view of product status to all stakeholders. How is that going to help? Okay. It is a very helpful thing to create Kanban board and cumulative flow diagram to track your progress and everything. Right? But how is it going to help in this situation? How is it going to avoid the situation? It will only tell you what your project status is. How will it avoid the regulatory things and everything? Right. So, it is not relevant to the question at hand. Then we go to C. Educate the team to determine the minimum viable product to test the idea. Okay. Could this help? What is a minimum viable product? Launching the product into the market with minimum features that would help us test the idea. Could it have helped? Probably. If you are going for a full fledged launch, Okay, and it is resulting in a lot of changes, a lot of regulatory requirements. Why not go ahead with just one or two features, most important features? See what happens. Okay, learn from it and then build, keep on building the features. So, this is saying that instead of having a one big, big bang launch, we should have gone with an MVP. Let us train our team members on MVP. It is a good idea. Okay, is it directly related to the question at hand? Okay, we don't know, but it does say that there were a lot of regulatory checks, there were a lot of changes, okay, which delayed the product. So it is hinting towards using agile approach, and MVP is a good way of using agile approach where we deliver something incremental. Okay, so B is wrong, A we were doubtful, and C is something that now we are a little bit positive about. That okay, this could have helped. Then we go to D. Increase the contingency reserve. And prepare the team for applying fast failing techniques. Okay, now fast failing techniques is a great way to understand, launch the product incrementally to the market, see whether it fails, so that there will not be a delay of six months. You will come to know immediately within one week or two. And what is fast failing? Delivering something incrementally, getting to the execution very quickly with minimum number of features. Using MVP is a way of fast failing technique. Okay, so it is also helping. But there is one more information that says increase the contingency reserve. 
Where has this come into picture? Why do we need a contingency reserve? There is nothing in the question that talks about anything which talks about keeping a contingency reserve and will it solve the problem? We don't know. Right? So, although the second part of this option is good, the first part makes it a bad choice. So, now we have a choice where we can provide training to the team members on how to negotiate with regulatory authority, which is something that we don't know it will help or not because we don't know whether the delay was because of negotiation. So, we can eliminate A. C is something which says educate the team to determine minimum viable product. Okay. Now, we know that there were a lot of regulatory checks and a lot of changes. MVP or fast failing techniques help in the conditions where there are a lot of changes. So, we have an option that is closer to helping us, which is a good choice. Okay. So, very important lesson here in this question, you will not always find a solution that is direct solution to that, to the problem at hand, which would look logical to you as well. It may happen that it is close to solving that problem. And that's what we are looking at. Okay, so if I want to avoid the situation, this could help me. And that's what we'll go ahead with. That's what we discussed when we are discussing about the problem solving flow. That we arrive at a solution that we think that might help. So out of the four options, this is the best choice. There, can there be a better, better solution? Yes. Universally, there could be multiple better solutions to avoid this problem. But we have to decide between the four choices that have been given to us. Hence, comparing the option and deciding which one is better is always good. Okay. So, a summary to how to solve PMP questions. Understand the information well. Summarize the main information so that you understand the situation. Question is the most important part of everything that you see. Information, question and options. This is the most important part because ultimately you have to solve the question. Then look at the options. If you can eliminate it, then eliminate it. If you have to keep it, then keep it and compare. So first eliminate and then compare to decide which one is the best choice. Okay. These are the ways in which you can speed up your preparation for PMP, speed up your answering the question. Okay. We are doing all the 35 tasks in a series and I hope that these questions are helping you build that mindset. It is helping you keep a track of your progress that yes, task by task, I am covering everything. And while we are discussing things, I hope that you are identifying that yes, this is something that I don't know. This is something that I need to study for and you are going back and you are studying for it. It will help you immensely in your PMP preparation. So now, we are also thinking about coming up with some concepts explanation on our channel. Okay, we are covering questions and we will cover all the 35 uh, tasks. But in between, we want to cover some concepts also which would clarify the doubts. Okay, while going through the questions that we have just discussed, we thought that there are few things that uh, you would want to discuss. So, if you are kind enough to let us know which concept is something that is troubling you the most out of these three and we'll try to create a concept explanation video on that. So in the comment box, if you could let me know whether cumulative flow diagram is troubling you more, Kanban board is troubling you more or instead of focusing on just PMP or focused on improving your project management, would you like to learn more about collaboration software or tools in the project? Let me know in the comments A, B or C. Thank you so much for your patience. I'll see you on the next task, which is task number six in the people domain is to build a team. Thank you so much.